Hello and welcome to the Israel Museum. I'm Lisa Lurie, curator of Islamic art and archaeology. Today we have a festive tour for you, created for the museum's annual program called Ramadan Nights. Ramadan is the ninth month of the Muslim lunar calendar, a time for special devotion. One of its main commandments is the daily fast. No eating or drinking from sunrise to sunset. After the month of Ramadan comes Eid al-Fitr, the festival of the breaking of the fast. The theme we chose for this year's Ramadan night is the palm tree, an important subject in Islamic culture. The palm is the most frequently mentioned tree in the Quran. It is associated with the Prophet Muhammad, who is said to be have land against the palm tree while preaching. These three symbolize inner and outer beauty, goodness and endurance, and therefore represent the ideal quality of the believer. The palm tree also appears in Islamic medical and scientific books as early as the 7th century, praised for its physical and spiritual benefits. So it comes as no surprise that its fruit, the date, is an important part of Ramadan recipes. While the tree is an artistic motif in Hajj painting, images adoring the houses of pilgrims who have been to Mecca. Let's visit the Israel Museum Galleries to see what different examples of dates and palm trees can tell us. Our virtual tour begins in the archaeology wing, at the wall leaf from the 9th century before Christ's era when Ashur Nasir Pal II was the king of Assyria. This alabaster panel from Kelach, today Tel Nimrud in northern Iraq, is adorned with stylized palm tree. Flanking the tree are two winged figures, protective beings, who carry small baskets and cone-like objects, which they seem to be doing something to the tree. Their action resembles the way trees are artificially pollinated in those days in Iraq. So that image may be intended to convey fertility and agricultural plenty. In ancient texts, the word for the cone-like object held by the figures means purifier. So the ceremony in the relief may also intended to be to purify the building in which it was placed. Large reliefs in the Shurpal's palace show the king alongside with a palm tree, worshipping the Mesopotamian god Ashur who is depicted in a winged disc above the tree. But the written inscriptions on the panel has nothing to do with the palm tree or the scene. It's just a short part of a standard text glorifying the king and lists his accomplishments. The type of inscription found in throughout the ancient Near East. Our second station features the palm tree's foot, the date. The Prophet Muhammad recommended breaking the daily fast with dates, and that's what he himself did. This ancient glass object, in the shape of a date, was made at the 1st or 2nd century Christ era. It was the 1st century that vessels began to be produced by blowing glass into a two-part mold, and the mold used here apparently constructed around an actual dried date. A lump of molten glass will be placed at the top of the mold and then blown into the shape, after which the mold will be taken apart and the top of the vessel will be crafted. This method made it possible to produce many identical objects quickly and efficiently. Even though vessels of this type have been excavated in Europe, it seems that they were also produced at the Eastern Mediterranean, notably at the Phoenician city of Sidon. What could a vessel with such a small opening have held? Something precious, like perfume oil or medicine, or perhaps date sugar, as the form suggests. Once again, we see the importance of the date palm already in the early days of civilization. These rare Islamic pottery vessels were made in the 8th century Christ era and were excavated in a dig near Nes Yonah in central Israel. Exceptionally, they were found in their entirety and their fine decoration was preserved even though protective glazing was not yet in use. The plate and the bowl were fired in a high temperature and then the motives were drawn. A bird with outspread wings, a date palm laden with fruit, a pine cone or a cypress tree. 
Only members of the upper class could afford such exquisite pottery, and indeed, vessels of this type were uncovered at urban sites like Hebron and Jerusalem, where the wealthy resided, and also at Hisham Palace, Kirbat al Mafjar in Jericho. The tree and the bird motif seen here are unique to our region. Scholars believe that they were influenced by Coptic textiles from that time. If so, the influence would attest a very interesting phenomenon in visual culture of Christianity and Islam. We've reached the last stop on our tour of palm trees in a museum, a new work created by Israeli artist Asaf Evron. Evron's palm tree conveys the image's continuity and evolution from antiquity until today. Called untitled Ha'atzma'ut Street Corner of Ben Gurion Boulevard, Herzliya, this work is displayed at the entrance to our exhibition Shutters and Stairs, elements of modern architecture in contemporary art. Evron based the piece on a photograph of outer wall of a building from the 1960s. The wall had been decorated with a pair of palm trees fashioned in ceramic styles that had been fall off. Evron's styles are not made of ceramics but of wood, a material that will decompose and disappear just as trees are disappearing from the Israeli urban landscape. Both highly symbolic palm tree and the ephemeral material are distant to vanish. Using identical rectangles to form the trees recalls the geometric modularity of modernist design and may also suggest the pixels of our digital age. These straight lines seem very distant from the natural curves in old-style depictions created in the land of palm trees. Our tour has shown us objects from a broad range of times, places and materials, but all of them were created in our region. They and testify that the date palm significance in this part of the world. We hope you have enjoyed the virtual version of Ramadan night. To our Muslim visitors, we wish you a sweet Ramadan and we hope that everyone will visit the museum next year to experience the occasion inside our campus. <laughs>